as I've said, treat a REIT as a different stock altogether because it's somehow a hybrid, right? It's almost like compared to your fixed income instrument. Hi, this is Rex Mendoza from Ramper Financials. Once again, let me thank all of you who support our channel, like our videos, and who are subscribers. For those of you who haven't, please do smash that subscribe button and tap that bell to make sure you get notified of our upcoming videos. Today, I'm going to go back on a promise I made when I did an A-Read video two weeks ago. When I did that, the price was at 24.10 and I was thinking all throughout that weekend why it came to be so. Now, two weeks later, the price is at over 26 pesos per share and some of you might have been happy that you bought at that particular juncture. But there was a promise that I made. I said, I missed out on a few details and I'm going to be happy to do another video just to complete this. Looking back, there are only three things that I want to add on. There are three things that I want to further emphasize. Number one would be the taxes. You see, the REIT law was envisioned to develop the real property industry and make sure that investors, the retail investors, and the general public can take part in this particular endeavor. When the REIT law was being evaluated, government and the private sector put their heads together to provide certain incentives. And that's the reason why there is a bit of a difference here when it comes to enticements. If you are going to be buying your own property, whether it's residential, commercial, or even office space, to be able to lease out, you're going to go through the regular purchase process. And at a certain price, you're going to be exposed to VAT and you're going to be paying for documentary stamp taxes. In REITs, the government has laid down certain incentives, so much so that the REIT doesn't have to pay for the VAT in all of the purchases and investments it makes in real estate. And the other is the fact that there is a discount to the DST that it's about to pay, 50%. So technically, in terms of scale, the REIT will have advantages over an individual investor doing it on his own. This has been done to benefit that retail participant so that he can benefit from his participation in real estate investment trusts. The number two item is the capability to pursue accretive growth through the acquisition of assets. I think I mentioned this, but I should have pushed it further. As I guess a lot of people thought about what's inside ARI today, and they think that capital appreciation will be limited because ARI only owns buildings. It doesn't own the land that the buildings are on top of. So in terms of appreciation, it can be quite limited. It's very different from owning both land and building. However, in this thrust for accretive growth, ARIT can do that now. ARIT has the excess liquidity to be able to purchase new assets. And for some of those new assets, it can be land for lease and it can be land or buildings for lease. In so doing, that same base of shareholders can take part in terms of that growth, which can even be magnified through leverage. Again, the use of loans. And I think I've mentioned that in my first video. The last one is actually the effective computation of the dividend. I kind of alluded to it in that first video, but because the announcements have been made for the dividends, I can now deal with the detail. Okay, ARIT has announced the first quarter dividend and the second quarter dividend of the year 
will actually have a record date late August and it will be paid early September. So, if you're a person who has a fixed income instrument, once you're told of a certain rate of return, interest, or yield, you're supposed to earn that within the period you are invested. So, if you say you put in a million and you're told that your interest rate is 5%, you're supposed to get 5% for the remaining months of the year that you invested your money. So, if you put your money late August and you just have barely 4 months to earn that interest, what you're gonna get is 4 months plus a few days of your interest for the entire year. Essentially, creating a pro rata application of the interest to compute your actual earnings. For ARIT, however, let me just be clear about this. If you buy the share before the X date, that just means that you're going to be getting two quarters of interest barely being invested for four months. September, October, November, and December. But you got the first two quarters for this whole year. If they're going to be coming up with the third quarter before December ends, you're going to be getting three quarters by being invested a little over four months. So technically, your effective interest rate for 2020 will not be the rate that was written in that prospectus. So if we compare apples and apples with our deposits, with our fixed income instruments, we have to redo these computations and those would favor a REIT. And I think this is something that the market is now beginning to absorb and that's the reason for the movement in share prices. Again, this will have an impact much like any stock. After the X date, the stock price should move south because the dividend for some investors will be deducted. However, as I've said, treat a REIT as a different stock altogether because it's somehow a hybrid, right? It's almost like compared to your fixed income instrument. In so doing, fairly looking at the propensity of the stock to earn more in the coming years, the escalation and stuff like that, then the growth will be reliable, will be sustainable, and the rate of return might be surpassing what you would expect from your fixed income instrument. So basically, again, I will repeat this, REIT as an instrument has to match the particular investor. And because the particular investor will have to look at REIT very differently, then his evaluation of this stock should be very, very different from the other normal stocks he invests in. I hope, ladies and gentlemen, I was able to give you some bit of clarity in addition to what I've done in my first video. And I wish you all the best in your investments in your pathway to abundance that matters. Again, this is Rex Mendoza from Ramber Financials. Until our next video, God bless always.